In the last video, we saw how to implement a custom adapter and I also showed you a quick way to do it. And fortunately, uh, the quick way is turns out to be the wrong way to do it. Uh, first, we're going to see the problems which are associated with the custom adapter and then we're going to try to fix it. And now you can see I have a custom adapter here for my list view and you can see it works well but uh, you can also see that it is very slow and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the log cat and here you can see we have a few log messages that are associated with our application which is clearly visible from the application name that is this package name matches our application name so this log is from our custom list view application and let me go ahead and try to scroll down then you can see that the logcat has a lot of messages on it and uh, most of them are these two messages the one is the message that is being printed from the Dalvik virtual machine and the other one is from the choreographer first let's take a look at the messages from the choreographer you can see uh, it says skipped 52 frames the application may be doing too much work on its main thread so that's the message and uh, a choreographer is a component that is uh, responsible for coordinating the input events and the drawing on the screen. And it is skipping frames here because uh, it wants to keep the input event in sync with the UI. Let's take a look at the code so that we'll know what is actually going behind the scenes. Let's go back to our custom adapter. And here inside the getView method, we can see we are trying to inflate a view from XML. So inflating a view is actually a lot of work because you have to read the XML file and the layout inflator has to construct a view object from the XML. And since we are having around 15 items on our list currently, the getView method gets called at least 15 times when you scroll down the list once. And also, you can see that we have the view.findViewById methods. These methods are also very expensive because it has to traverse down the view hierarchy and find out the appropriate view. And these two methods are really expensive and we are trying to do it a lot of times when you scroll the list forward and backward. And that is why the choreographer is unable to keep up with the user interface and it starts skipping frames so that your UI looks as if it is in sync with your input events. And that's all about the message from the choreographer. The second thing I would like to talk about is the, the garbage collection log messages from our Dalvik virtual machine. Let's go ahead to the log cat and here you can see we have the garbage collector messages that often kick in while we scroll the application. And the reason for that is because when you scroll down from top to bottom, you create at least 15 views each for your list item and once the views that are not visible on the screen they don't have any reference and those views will eventually be collected by the garbage collector so in case if you are scrolling it a few times top and bottom new views will be created and also older ones which are not in view will be garbage collected and the severity increases when you have a lot of items on your list view in case if you have a thousand contacts or a thousand list items on the list view when you scroll from top to the bottom at least a thousand views will be created and all these views will be garbage collected periodically by the Dalvik VM and that is why the GC kicks in when you scroll down the list view so we have examined the reasons between uh, the log messages from the choreographer and also the log uh, messages from the Dalvik virtual machine and now let's go ahead to the emulator and I'll explain it to you once again because this concept seems to be a little bit vague when you just hear the theory. And here you can see we have uh, a list of items which are books, book objects. And when we try to scroll down the list, the getView method gets called for each and every list item. And every time a view is visible to you on the screen, a getView method is automatically called and therefore it results in creation of a new view and also the find view by methods are called every time a new view is created. And the second thing is we have to avoid creating multiple items. For instance, 
in this list we have around 15 items so it's not a good idea to create 15 items because if you have a thousand books in the same list it is not really efficient to create a thousand views for each and every list item so Android engineers decided to solve this problem by recycling the views and here on the screen you can see we have a few list items let me count them we have one two three four five six seven and eight views the eighth one is visible literally it is not completely visible but it is still there so we have eight list items on this screen and when you scroll down at any point of time there could be eight or nine views that's depending upon the size of the list item so at any point of time you can see only eight views on the screen and that really depends upon the screen size of your device so in this case it is sufficient to create eight views initially and reuse those views when you when you show additional list items which is we have the business at the speed of thought book item first and then we have the programming concurrency on the JVM as the last item on the screen currently when I try to scroll to the top you can see the book that is the business at the speed of thought list item disappeared or is out of the screen and Android can take that list item and it can which can be reused at the bottom of the screen which is in this case it could be JavaScript for dummies so when a screen just moves out of the screen it can be reused so adapters come with a recycler which can help you do that but it is still our responsibility to make sure that the views are being recycled and next I'm going to show you how to make use of this recycled views by modifying our custom adapter and that way we'll be eliminating the creation of unnecessary views and we'll also be avoiding calling these expensive methods such as the layout inflator dot inflate method and the view dot find view by id method when we are done with that the list will be even more responsive and even more efficient so let's go back to code and here in the custom adapter we're going to make some changes here inside the get view method you can see there is a parameter called as convert view and this is the recycle view currently we are ignoring this parameter we're not doing anything with this parameter and let me show you how to use it first thing we're going to do is we're going to assign this to the view and we're going to check if view is null which is if a recycled view is available or if a recycled view is not available so if a recycled view is null which is a view is not really available we're going to inflate it so now we have solved our first problem which is creating multiple views for every get view call and this piece of code now checks if the recycled view is null it creates a new view in case if the recycled view is not null then we are going to use the same view we have fixed one problem which is the creation of unnecessary view objects the next problem we find here is the find view by id method we have to eliminate the chances of these methods being called too many times we are going to do that by using a holder pattern. A holder is an object that can hold references to the views that you are interested in. And in this case, those views are the title and the author text views. First, we are going to create a new holder class, static class. And this class is going to hold the references to our views. The two views that we are interested in are the author and the title text view we have the references now we're going to create a constructor so we also have a constructor now This class will hold a reference to the views that we are interested. So I'm going to declare another variable that says holder. And here inside the if block, we're going to move this code.
which is finding the references to the title and the author text view and then we're going to create a new folder object which accepts these references as the the parameters so we have the holder here but we need to place this holder somewhere and that is where the view can help us out so view dot set tag of holder your adapter is intelligent enough to recycle the views along with their holders so you don't have to worry about it and if the view is not null we're going to get this holder from our inflated view typecast it and finally set the properties from the holder because the holder already has a reference to these variables so it's getting interesting here now you can see we have a holder instance which is going to hold the references of the views that we are interested in and first we're going to check if the view is null which means there are no recycled views and if there are no views we're going to inflate a new view get a reference to those views and create a holder for those references and and set up that holder to our inflated view in case if we have a recycle view just get the tag and after you get the tag you have the reference to the views which is the title and the author in this case and you are setting the properties on those views which are available from the holder and finally you return the view that's it that's how you do it so let's go back and run this program click on run Here we have our adapter and you can see it's a little bit faster than the previous implementation and let's go ahead and see the logcat which will tell us what is happening inside and when I try to scroll in you're still seeing the same messages that's because uh, the emulator itself is very slow however you can notice a tangible difference when you run it on an actual device and this is how you create a proper custom adapter in Android. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you.